Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. So today we have a really fun video in store for you guys. We're doing Pierced Heroes. Aren't you excited? I'm not personally doing a Pierced Hero. Oh no. yeah, no. <laughs> The hero in my life refuses to get pierced, but that's a whole different story. So, but that is what we're going to do. So just so you guys know that us talking about this, sometimes these are surprises in books. So these might be a little bit of spoilery situations because if it's supposed to be a surprise that the hero has it when they like start to get down and dirty, well, you don't get that surprise now, but we're still going to talk about it. So uh, before we get started, what do you want to tell them, Mandy? Am I talking about Pierce situation still? No, you're talking about making having them subscribe. Yes. So if you're watching this video, hit that subscribe button. We give away free books on our channel. We are on our road to 1K giveaway. We have lots of fun things planned. So you definitely want to hit the subscribe button because if you're subscribed, then you get a chance to win some of the free books that we give away. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. And do that. Yeah, our what? next big announcement's coming really soon. So you don't want to miss out. So no, you don't. No. So hit the subscribe button. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> you doing that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. All right, Jessica. Okay. So I decided to do some research. This is gonna be good. Okay. I looked it up. <laughs> I was actually surprised. I'm like, okay, I'm going to probably get like a whole bunch of like graphic photos that I probably don't really want to see. But instead, I got a, I found a chart that was like drawn. Yeah, I've seen that before. Okay? And it showed all the different types. And I had no idea that there were that many different ways to pierce that area. Oh, yeah. yeah. There is a lot of different ways. Yeah. And you know how I know that there is? Because every time I read a book where my because hero is you're pierced, a little... well, that too. But every time I read a book where my hero is pierced, I have to go look it up because the author will explain the piercing. You know, it's a Prince Albert or it's a Jacob's Ladder or it's a, you know, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, what does that look like? And you're like, so I need real life pictures. I just need, somebody just draw me a diagram of where it's supposed to be at because she can explain it or the author can explain it all they want, but I need visual aids. I don't okay. need them to be real life pictures, but yeah, there's a lot. There's also a lot of bananas. <laughs> yes, I thought so too. With and, it. and the yeah. diagram that they use is a very small little, I'm like, oh, that's sad. Just saying. Okay. Okay. So how do you feel about pierced heroes mm -hmm. in your books? I love it. But let's find out how they feel about it. I Yes. So comment below. What are your thoughts on pierced heroes? I I don't really I don't need it to happen in the book. I don't really care for it probably a little bit more because usually if it's so okay so when it's a rock star it yeah. makes sense to me but when it's some random guy I'm like so are you like a man whore like doing it with lots of people because if you're not already in a committed relationship and you decide to do it to heighten those activities then like one time we read a book where the guy had it, but he wasn't like really active. And that didn't like, make sense, the... but yeah. Yeah, it was weird to me. So mm -hmm. sometimes it has to fit the, I guess what I'm trying to say, it really has to fit the character's personality. And sometimes when it gets thrown in there, I'm like, the author's doing this for shock value and it doesn't fit the character's personality. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. That said. Okay. I guess I'm so all over the page on how I feel about it. It has to fit the character's personality, then I'm good with it. I normally, when I'm reading it, it normally turns into me looking over at my husband going, hey, will you go get this? And he looks at me like I'm insane every time I ask. So, you know. Yeah. No All right. So we have 10 recs. So let's get started with. Please. The book. Some of us have places to be, Jessica. Okay. Ready? 
I'm setting the timer. I guess I'm starting. There's no timer. You're wasting your time. There's no timer in this one. Okay, so I guess I'm I'm starting. I always get told that I'm starting first. So it really first, shouldn't be surprising at this point in the game. I really shouldn't, but I still get that way. I don't know why. Okay, so the first book that I have with a Pierce Hero is Rouge by Greer Rivers. So this is a um, retelling or reimagining of Romeo and Juliet and the play that Moulin Rouge is based off of. So this is about our heroine, who is Lacey, and our um, hero, who is Keen. And they're, this takes place in Vegas. It's a, not mafia. They never call it mafia, but they're crime families. And Keen and Lacey were engaged. They were supposed to be in an arranged marriage a few years before the book starts. And that falls apart. Lacey's father is now in prison and um, for some stuff that he did. And she has been promised to the Baron. Of this guy who's older than her, who's like in charge of everything. And um, she's at her, uh, what do you call it? Bachelor party. They go to a strip club. And this guy starts stripping and she's pulled on stage because she's a dancer. She's pulled on stage to dance with them. And they end up in the back and his, that this, the person's keen. And um, Keen has been obsessed with her since he was told he was going to marry her. And so he basically takes her. They get really drunk that night. They end up getting married. And then, you know, but she's still engaged to the Baron and the Baron is holding her father over her head as far as his um, imprisonment and a whole bunch of other stuff. So really good. Read this one, but Keen has a piercing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you got? Okay. <clears throat> My book is one of the first books that I can remember having a pierced hero in. <laughs> But it fit in this because he's a rock star. Okay. Apparently, I'm stereotyping rock stars now. Apparently, you are. Look at you. <laughs> but no, it fit his personality. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is called Faded in Bloom by Julia Wolf. This is about Adam, who is Adelaide, Addie's hot neighbor. And so they become friends. And... At the time, they're both kind of seeing other people, and it's purely just a friendship that then becomes to be really flirty. Lines are blurred. Neither one of them kind of realize what's happening between the two of them. And things get very blurred. Somebody is pierced and whips it out and takes a picture and sends it. Um, <laughs> to her, see how things get blurred. And then Adam <clears throat> does some really questionable things, which ends up breaking Adelaide's heart because she realizes that she's totally fallen for him and he doesn't feel the same. And so Adam then has to deal with the fact that he also realizes he has some serious feelings for Adelaide but she has disappeared out of his life and he doesn't understand why. And he has to figure out why. And he has a lot of groveling to do. Really enjoyed this. The, the piercing plays perfectly into their like, you know, you can look, but don't touch type chemistry that they have going on when they're, you know, blurring lines, but not crossing mm -hmm. some. So anyways, really enjoyed it. All right, so in the next book that I have, it fits because he's just crazy in general. So you can just see that happening because this is a Lauren Beale book. So, I mean, that just, it fits with Lauren Beale and her heroes or anti-heroes, if, if that's what you want to call them. Um, but this is Driving My Obsession. This is the third book in her, um, I don't even remember what she calls the series, uh, her Dark Hitchhiker series. They're all standalones. Um, but this is about Ambrose and Oakwood. So Oakland was, um, she was a dancer, a, pro, a professional dancer until a few months prior where she has an accident and, or six months earlier, she's in a car accident and now she can't dance like she used to. So she still has to like, you know, pay the bills and things still have to happen. Um, so she's stripping now. She doesn't want to, but that's what she's doing. That's where she's at. 
Uh, she doesn't have a vehicle. She takes the bus and otherwise her sleazy boss will give her a ride home. But if she, he gives her a ride home, then she has to perform certain favors to pay him back for that. So he is sleazy. Then you have Ambrose. He is a street fighter and he has scars all over his body. He had a very traumatic childhood and he is just a very broken person and he, he crazy. He's very crazy. And he wants to get back at the person who originally hurt him, but that person is no longer here. So he decides that he's going to find somebody who is similar to that person and he's going to hurt them instead. And so that is where Oakland comes into play. And he um, gives her a ride home one day after work. He sees her on the, on the side of the road and he gives her a ride home and uh, things progress from there. He, he, he's gonna kill her. He's gonna hurt her, but there's just something about her. So he keeps her around for a little while longer than a little while longer. And, and that's how it goes. So, um, his piercing obviously fits his personality because he, he, he just that kind of person. He's just, he's just that kind of person. So I love Lauren Beale. She really pushes the, the envelope there. I mean, she just, she just, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Okay, my next book I absolutely love. I've talked about it before. I believe you've you read it. One percent of you, yeah, you read oh, it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. That I was a piercing I had to look up. I was like, he's got it. Where? How did that work? Well, he has multiples. <laughs> yes, but still, there was one that I was like, how is that? How does that work? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So one percent of you by Michelle Gross. This is. Oh, fantastic read. So you don't even need to read it because of the Pierce part. Just read it. So good. So this is about Hadley and Elisha. Hadley got pregnant right out of school. She's putting herself through nursing school. She is working really hard. She has a three-year-old daughter and she is pregnant again. And she realizes that the guy she's been with is a scum. He's like, let her do all she does everything for him and he you know tlc's no scrubs like that is him he is awful and just mooches off of her basically so she's putting herself through school she is working and she's taking care of her three-year-old daughter lucy and she realizes what she looks like to the outside world that she just looks like this is how she tells like in the book she says i know that people just think i'm another welfare mom but really they don't know me because I am working so hard to get out of this situation. And so she's trying really hard and Elijah is grumpy, he's tattooed, and he moves then to the house next to her apartment. And he he's irritated with her, just like what she knows that he's judged her. And they meet in a grocery store where he gets into an argument with Lucy over a bag of chips. And she's just like, wow, what is wrong with him? But he even recognizes in the moment, he's like, oh, dear God, I'm like arguing with a three-year-old over a bag of chips <laughs> because he purposely tries to scare her <laughs> to get the last bag of chips. Like, it's like sort of a meet cute, but not really situation. So he is kind of forced into their world living next door and he starts to kind of take a little bit of a liking to them. And he is a tattoo artist. So he spends most of his day doing piercings and tattoos, which Hadley makes her very, very insecure in the beginning. Like they're not, they aren't really in a relationship yet. Like things are just kind of happening and it makes her very insecure that this is what he does. And he recognizes, like, in that moment, like, oh, if she does not like piercings, what is she going to think when she finds out about me? And so it is uh, it is such a good book. It is. As the, it's a very slow burn. And it's him, like, really evolving it, as a person. And we have a very strong heroine, even though she is like a little insecure and jealous, like she's still a very, very strong heroine. And it's more like she's just feeling like he's in this whole other world than she's in. So while there is some jealousy and some insecurity, it's not like she's like, oh, I'm just not good enough. I'm such a horrible person. Like she's not self-loathing, I guess you could say. 
but oh, I love the book. And the piercing stuff just plays perfectly into it. I'm sorry I'm boring you. You're not boring me at all. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So our next pierced hero, I read this one last week. So this one is Bexley's Biker. This is by Misty Walker. This is the third in her Royal Bastards MC. And the guy is an MC. So the piercing, it, 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 it goes, right? Like it goes with that bad boy image. So this is about Khan. His, his first name is Wesley, but he goes by Khan. That's his road name. And then you have our heroine who is Bexley. Obviously, it's Bexley's biker. Anyhow, Bexley is the lawyer for the club. And Khan has done something in previous books. So this is the third, but you can read these as standalones. Um, but he did something in a previous book that that landed him in jail. And so she's trying to get him, she, you know, get him out on parole and then keep his nose clean and keep him out. Well, these two have a very um, antagonizing relationship. They are always at each other's throats. He, he is in love with her. Khan is like, he knows that that is going to be his woman. Bexley has not quite figured that out. But I love their banter and their back and forth. They just are at each other's throats all the time. Um, and then there's some other things that happen because we find out that Bexley is actually, that's not her name. She's on the run from her husband who has connections. And she um, he was very abusive to her. And so she's been hiding for several years. And now the husband has found her again and she can't just run and hide because now she's a lawyer with her own practice and she's made a name for herself and she just can't up and run. So then that's where you have Khan who comes in and is like, well, I'm going to protect her. So that's, that's that one. I love this one. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mine is the one that I just read last week as well. Is it? Okay. It is. All right. Okay, so okay. <laughs> this is Hating You, Loving You by Crystal Caswell. And this is about Chloe and Dean. Um, Chloe and Dean knew each other in high school. Some things went down between them. And now Chloe just really does not like Dean. Chloe has had some things happen in her life that have made her want to seize the day. And she decides that she's going for it. She really wants to be a tattoo artist. She's extremely talented artist. So she decides to get an apprenticeship at a tattoo shop that is co-owned by Dean and his brother. And the brother is the one who like makes more of those types of decisions. And so he agrees to let her come on as, a, as an apprentice at the shop. And this throws her and Dean back in each other's orbits. And Dean and her have the most delightful banter. I absolutely love it. Love it. It also has a little bit of heavier side because the things that have been going on in Chloe's life include her having breast cancer. She finds a lump and she has to have a double mastectomy. This is her after all of those things have happened, but it's still a driving force in the book with her feelings about that and I felt like it was really well written my experiences are more from like being Jessica's bestie and not my own so based on that knowledge I feel like the representation in the book was written really well um so while she's doing this tattoo apprenticeship her and Dean are like you know back and forth with the banter and things start to kind of heat up there and Dean is also pierced and it fits his character perfectly because he works at a tattoo place. He is, uh, has, I mean, he's, I loved Dean. He is hilarious. He's not shy. He likes showing off his Prince Albert. He talks about it a lot and he doesn't care who sees it or knows about it. <laughs> but it was a really good book and I think it just is a testament to the author's great writing to be able to have such a heavy concept and do that justice while having parts of the book that are just very light and so the book doesn't feel like a downer right and she can go back and forth between those emotions and capturing Chloe's emotions during this and Dean's as well so love the book highly recommend it okay this is kind great of great cool. pierced Wait. hero I need to read that one here soon because we're coming up on like I'm gonna be meeting you next month to go get my tattoos. Like this is that book would be perfect, honestly. Mm -hmm. yep. The artist situation, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. 
Okay, so the next book I have for you guys is Irish by Brittany Nicole. I love this book. This is so good. So this is about uh, Frank and Eleanor. They're When they're young, they're friends. So Frank is a part of the Irish mafia and Eleanor is a part of the Italian mafia. And um, Eleanor's had a pretty rough life. And when she is... Um, a teenager, Frank leaves, he goes and joins the military and then it comes home eventually, but he never comes back. They're really close when they're young. And she has been in love with Frank her whole life. And some things happen. She is forced to marry the um, head of the Irish mafia. And then he is, uh, he's believed to be dead at this point, Frank is, um, there are some things that happen. So he has to fake his own death. And so he is believed to be dead. And so we like, get ahead, like 10 years, she's been married for about 10 years. At this point, her husband is very abusive. He uses her sister who lives with them against her and like threatens to marry her off to these nasty guys in the uh, mafia if they, she doesn't comply. And so he actually has her out there unaliving his enemy. So she has become a serial unaliver at this point, And it's being forced by her husband. He hangs her two boys and her sister over her head. So she's not happy about this. She's very um, upset that this is what she has to do, but she's, you know, become really good at it at this point. And so she gets a call one day after a severe beating. And it's by a lawyer who says that somebody has passed away and left her a place in um, Maine on an island or right outside of, you know, in, in the Maine somewhere up there. And so she in the middle of the night packs up her sister and her boys and they flee. When they get to the cabin, Frank is there and she about dies because she thought he was gone. But Frank is there. He is now the head of the Irish mafia. And she doesn't know this. He doesn't know that she's, you know, like he knows that her husband's been abusive, but he doesn't know all the other stuff. And so this is more centered on their relationship than it is on the mafia. There is some mafia stuff in here, but not as much as you would expect, but it's just such a great story. It really is. It's so good. So read that one. And, and he's got a Jacob's ladder because apparently that's what you do. So I like how this is about Pierce Churros and like at the very end, you're like, oh, and he has. A oh, I mean, but that's the best part. He does. He's got a Jacob's ladder. Forgot that little part. I forgot that little part. But I just, because I just love the book so much. I was just going on and on here. So, yes, he has a Jacob's ladder. Okay. Okay. So my next book is called Stepbrother Dearest, and this is um, by Penelope Ward. This is about Alec and Greta. This is obviously a forbidden stepbrother romance, and then our hero is pierced. They meet when they are teenagers, when Alec comes to live with Greta and her mom and Greta's stepdad, which would be Alec's dad. And he comes his senior year. And they don't really like each other, but then they do like each other. So it's kind of like that stepbrother, you know, situation. And things happen between them one night and then something goes down and Alec goes back to live with his mom and just completely disappears because he does not have a good relationship with his dad. And so he just kind of completely disappears out of Greta's life. And then we fast forward years later to when Greta's stepdad passes away. So he comes back for the funeral. He has been in um, a committed relationship for, I think it's been a couple of years. She comes back with him for part of it. And when they meet up, they can definitely like still have this chemistry. And so um, this is them kind of finding their way back to each other. Are you redecorating? <laughs> I, it was it was driving me nuts. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. So it's them finding their way back to each other while dealing with like everything that's currently happening in their lives with, you know, things. But he is a pierced hero because he's kind of a bad boy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty standard. They're a bad boy. Got a piercing. Let's surprise a girl with it. It's all good. So, okay. okay. So the next book that I have, or the last book that I have is A Secret Obsession by S. Mastery. This is the third book in her Hockey God series. This is about Willow and Miles. 
So um, Willow has been dating Miles's brother for a, a time. They've been together. And um, Miles is, both the boys are on the hockey team. Miles is the goalie. And he's been in love with Willow since he first met Willow years ago. Like he's just, he is obsessed with her, which is where the obsession comes in. And things go down with his brother in public. And there is um, a situation that is really not cool that happens and they break up. And so when that happens, he decides that Willow's his now and he's going to make that happen whether she likes it or not. And so that's how the book moves forward. But um, he is a bad boy and he is a pierced bad boy. Uh, you can read these as standalone. I still think you should read them all in order because you just get more out of them. But you can read it as a standalone. So yay. I love crazy deranged hockey players. Okay, so what is your last book? Uh, what's your who's your last pierced hero? Okay, my last pierced hero is Ryan in Lauren Rose's book Captain. So this is part of the Morgan Brothers series. It's book number two. Morgan Brothers series is fantastic. Ryan is our pierced hero, and this is about Ryan and Tessa or T Rod. They meet at a bar. Tessa is dressed like a flight attendant. She's not really. And they hit it off. But Ryan's ex, who is a little bit crazy, Olivia, shows up, starts yelling at him. And so Tessa thinks, dear, oh my gosh, like she's just like, I cannot meet a decent guy to save my life. And so she assumes because, I mean, who wouldn't? You're at a bar, you meet this guy who's being all flirty with you. And then all of a sudden this woman shows up screaming like, how dare you cheat on me? Like, it's very believable why she believes the scene that's unfolding before her. So her and her friend just leave before Ryan can explain anything. Ryan becomes mildly obsessed with finding her. And we fast forward three months later to Hawaii for Ryan's sister Kat's wedding. And they have their own trilogy. And Tessa's boss is Josh, who is Kat's fiance. So three months later, Ryan's still like pining for this woman. They meet up in Hawaii. They don't realize the connection until they're there. And then he's like, oh my gosh, this is the woman I've been trying to find. They have excellent chemistry. They have fantastic love-hate sex. Totally enjoy it. Ryan is pierced. At times I felt like it didn't necessarily match his character, but then at other times I was like, oh wait, yes it does. So it's one of those where part of his persona that he kind of puts out to the world is a little bit different than what he is behind closed doors. So he is our interesting pierced hero in this one, but really enjoyed the book as well. All, all my books that I recommended for this, I really enjoyed. Oh, yeah. I, we wouldn't why would you do a recommend? Like, this really, I really don't need to probably say that because it's obvious. If we're doing a recommendation video, we really enjoyed the books. True. But, you know, we get used to saying it in our book rec videos. So, yes. it, it, it comes out naturally. So, yeah. I, I guess maybe my point more is so that I really enjoyed these books for their stories and not just yeah. because the pierced hero no, was in it. That's just an added bonus for all of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So that's what all we have for pierced heroes. So leave us a comment. Do you have a favorite pierced hero? Do you like it when the heroes are pierced? Can you take it or leave it? How do you feel about that? And make sure you check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us and Wednesdays for the remainder of 2023 for Romance School 101. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.